much for hanging around and sticking with us. Uh, welcome to Zoo School Live. Um, sorry we're experiencing some technical difficulties, but if you're hanging out, thanks so much for sticking with us. Um, today, we are starting our new week of learning. We're gonna be learning all about habitats this week. Um, but first and foremost, of course, we have some artwork to show you guys. Um, this is from Tegan and Victoria from San Diego, California. Oh my goodness, that is awesome. We love your paper plate um, animal here. It looks kind of just like Pokey. I wonder if that's who he is. Um, so thank you so much for sending in your artwork. Again, if you guys want to send in some more artwork, be sure to either email us at education at elmwoodparkzoo.org um, or you can mail it to us, which is exciting too. Uh, so today we're learning a little bit about grasslands. Um, so I want you guys to think about a pretty wide open area little to no trees and maybe some bushes or shrubs, but for the most part, a lot of grasses. Um, it's a wide open area. So today, we're gonna be meeting one of my absolute favorite friends here. And her name is Sandy. Now Sandy is a gopher tortoise. So she's gonna be doing a little bit of exploring. Adventuring is one of Sandy's absolute favorite hobbies. So Sandy here, she's a gopher tortoise. Now, she might be from a grassland area, but we call her a gopher tortoise because just like an actual gopher, uh, she is going to dig great big burrows. So she's gonna dig great big holes in the ground, and that is where she's gonna stay safe um, from all kinds of predators um, or or just from the, the elements, she's gonna be living um, in a burrow. And so how she's gonna get into that burrow, right? A burrow is kind of a hole in the ground where an animal lives. And a gopher tortoise burrow can be like nearly 10 to 15 feet into the ground and can be something like 50 feet long. So it can be an enormously long burrow. And that burrow is gonna provide a really great home for Sandy and other gopher tortoises. Now, Sandy, since she's a gopher tortoise, um, she likes to live where it's pretty warm. And these guys are native to the United States. So you will find gopher tortoises down in southeastern United States. They mostly find them in Florida. Um, so they like it really nice and humid, um, and that's where they're gonna be uh, living. And particularly in not really the swampy areas of Florida or um, they're going to be, or on the beaches, they're mostly going to be living in these grassland areas, and we call that scrubland. Um, and those scrubland are kind of, it's going to be some shrubs, lots of grasses, um, and little to no trees, and then lots of gopher tortoise burrows, which are really exciting. Um, so how is Sandy going to dig that great big burrow, right? Do you think she takes a shovel down with her and just starts digging away? Probably not, right? Sandy here, I don't know if she'd be able to hold the shuffle real well. Um, but luckily for her, she has these two great big arms and they're pretty shovel-like. And you might be able to see she's got some, some large fingernails on, on those feet and she's gonna use those to help dig herself a great big burrow um, where she's gonna spend the majority of her days. Now, Sandy here, she's diurnal, so what she's gonna do is during the daytime, she's gonna wake up, she's gonna come crawling out of her burrow, she might hang out in the sun for a little bit, right? Sunshine is so important to turtles and tortoises, right? Our, San our friend Sandy here, she's a tortoise. Um, and sunshine is so important for them because they are going to, uh, for them, they're going to be uh, soaking up all that sunshine. It's good to help them, lots of vitamin D. Um, and also it helps to make sure that they stay nice and healthy with all their bone growth. So, and nice and toasty warm, right? Because since our friend Sandy here is a reptile, that means that she is cold blooded. So for her, it's really important that she hangs out in the sun and warms up because if not, um, that wouldn't be such a great day for Sandy. She likes to be nice and toasty warm because she relies on the sun to manage her body temperature, right? To make sure that she stays nice and healthy. Now, Sandy here, she's a tortoise, right? And we met Woody, 
uh, the wood turtle last week, and she was what we called a turtle, right? Um, and yes, Sandy here, she's also a turtle, but she's the kind of turtle that we call a tortoise, right? Because she lives on land, and you can see she has these big, wide legs that are made for walking, right? They're definitely made for walking around and digging in the dirt, but they're not very good for swimming, right? And you can see that Sandy's shell is kind of a big, bowl-like shape. Um, so that's not going to be very good for swimming either. So that's kind of how we know that she's a tortoise. She's a land-based animal, which is pretty exciting. We do have a salad out here for Sandy today, and we'll see if she's interested in eating any of it. So it's got all kinds of good stuff in it. It has some lettuce and some hay, right? Remember I said she lives in grasslands, so what do you think she's going to be eating most of the time? probably grasses. And our friend Sandy here, she is absolutely an herbivore, so she won't be eating any bugs or small animals. She's just going to prefer to eat all kinds of lettuce and plants in the wild. They're gonna eat like 400 different kinds of plants. So most of their diet's gonna be made up out of grass, but they're going to eat maybe some berries that have fallen on the ground. Uh, they'll eat prickly pears. Uh, they're going to eat all kinds of plants, and that's like dandelions. That's all really good stuff for our friend Sandy here. Um, here at the zoo, we provide her with a variety as well. She gets lots of different kinds of lettuces and greens. She also gets some fruits and veggies as well as a special treat. Uh, so Sandy here, she gets a pretty wide variety uh, here at the zoo and in the wild, they would eat a large array of plants as well. Now, Sandy here, right, so she lives in this burrow and their burrow is so important, not just for Sandy, but for all the other animals that live in these scrublands. So how cool is this? Sandy digs this great big burrow, right? It can be like 50 feet long, remember, in the ground. And it's really important to be underground, especially in a place like Florida where it can be very warm sometimes. Hanging out underground or underneath the dirt is gonna allow them to kind of get out of the hot sun or get out of the elements, right? Get out of it if it's raining, um, you know, to, to get find themselves in a different, uh, in, a, in a little bit of a, a you know, uh, some shelter, right? And so, for Sandy, she digs this great big burrow for her and all these gopher tortoises, they're gonna live one tortoise to a burrow, right? They're gonna dig their own burrow. But so many other animals that live in these scrublands are gonna call that burrow home too. So it's almost like Sandy builds this great big apartment building and all these animals move in. There's up to 350 different kinds of animals that will hang out with gopher tortoises in their burrows. Maybe not 350 individual animals all at once, but for these guys, uh, there could be several other animals living around in that same burrow with a gopher tortoise. So for Sandy, um, here at the zoo, we kind of gave her her own little burrow to hang out in. She lives behind the scenes here. She's one of our ambassador animals. Um, but in the wild, um, she doesn't have any, any friends that live with her here at the zoo. She's a solo gal. Um, but out in the, in the wild, there might be animals like snakes and insects and small mammals like mice or rats and that's, they're all going to hang out in this small, in this, I don't know, I should say pretty large, actually, burrow with a gopher tortoise. Uh, now, gopher tortoises, um, I know a lot of you guys ask about if some of our animals have friends or not. Um, and gopher tortoises, although Sandy here, she's, she likes to kind of hang out on her own. Um, in the wild, gopher tortoises uh, absolutely have friends. Scientists and researchers down in Florida have found that gopher tortoises, when they crawl out of their burrows during the day, they'll actually crawl out and they'll go and they'll graze, right? Which means they'll slowly eat grass throughout the day. Um, but they'll also go and visit other gopher tortoise burrows. And scientists found that certain gopher tortoises will actually see the same, they'll go to the same burrows uh, every single time. So for them, they go and they do have friends and there's certain burrows that gopher tortoises will avoid. Uh, so it all depends, but in the wild, gopher tortoises absolutely have friends, which is pretty cool. It looks like Sandy, you can see she's kind of using her beak and her nose to explore a little bit of her surroundings. Sometimes she likes to try to chomp on stuff to see what it is and that will help her out too. And it helps her um, 
see if it's edible or not. She's always on the mood for snacks, so she's always cruising around looking for good things to eat. Now, Sandy here, right, and you can see she's got a pretty awesome shell, right? So this shell is gonna help protect her from predators. Um, but in the wild, luckily, these guys don't have the don't have a ton of predators. They're gonna have more predators when they're younger, um, but when they've reached maturity, Sandy here, she's a little over a foot long and she weighs about 11 pounds. Um, so she's, she's a pretty big girl. Um, so luckily nothing's really gonna be able to carry her away. Like a hawk is not gonna be able to carry her away. She's gonna be too heavy. Um, and things like raccoons might try to eat them, um, maybe even some other smaller carnivores or omnivores. Um, but for the most part, Sandy here, uh, she's gonna be pretty safe once she's full grown. In reality, one of the biggest threats to these guys is habitat loss, which means that those scrublands that they like to live on means that sometimes people like to build buildings or houses on those areas. Um, and so the tortoises don't have anywhere to build those great big burrows, right? So habitat loss loss is one of the main things that affects these guys. Um, so Sandy here in particular, let me tell you a little bit about her. So Sandy absolutely loves to try to eat things. Um, it's one of her favorite hobbies. She also really loves to go for walks. So you can see she's not, she's not being too stable here on this table. She's moving around a lot. Um, and that's because she loves to cruise. So Sandy here loves to go for walks. Um, she loves to uh, walk around the zoo. So on a nice summer day, you might even, if you come to visit the zoo, you might even see her cruising around. We like to take her for walks around the zoo. Uh, she won't wear a leash or anything like that. Uh, we actually just let her cruise and that is super helpful for her and it keeps her nice and healthy. Helps to make sure her nails stay filed down because we don't give her pedicures or manicures, right? She takes care of those fingernails on her own by cruising around and walking on a lot of different substrates, right? Or a lot of different kinds of ground. Now, uh, these guys are super awesome. Um, we always like to talk about turtles this time of year because come around May, June time, you might see some turtles um, moving around a lot more. It's a lot, a lot of times when turtle eggs are hatching. Um, so it's important because one of the other big threats for these guys are actually cars. So it's really important that if you see a big old rock that looks like it's walking across the street, chances are it's probably not a rock and it may just be a big old turtle. So always look twice um, before you're driving down the street. If you see something that looks like a rock, double check and make sure that it's not a turtle. It's always good to help safely cross turtles across the road, but it's always important to do it with an adult and to make sure that you don't ever put yourself in danger. Now, Tortoises here, remember we were talking a little bit last week with our friend Woody the Wood Turtle. Um, and if you missed that episode, you can always catch up on our YouTube channel to uh, see some of our older episodes if, or if you forget some info and you wanna go back and look up some more things, check out some of our previous videos. Um, but we were talking last week about Woody, how she doesn't have any teeth and uh, being a wood turtle. And Sandy's the same way. She does not have any teeth either. She just has a big old beak that she's going to use to chomp down on her lettuce and all her, the grasses that she likes to eat. All right, so we're going to start taking some questions. All right, so thanks again for tuning in, guys, and for hanging out with us. Um, Abby wants to know, how long will she live? Ah, amazing. So these guys in the wild, they can live maybe up into their 40s, 60s. Um, and in, in human care where we can take care of them and give them meds when they get older and help them eat, um, they can live over 90 years. Uh, so Sandy here, she's actually, she's only turning 16 years old this year. Uh, so she's still pretty young in tortoise years. All right. Rebecca would like to know, how did she get to EPZ? Great question, Rebecca. So Sandy actually came from the Central Florida Zoo. They had a whole bunch of uh, gopher tortoises that were born there. Um, and so that's where she came from. We got her from there, which was pretty exciting. Katie wants to know, does she have a lot of predators? Hey, Katie, I hope I answered your question a little bit earlier, but just in case you forget, our for our, our gopher tortoises, they don't really have a lot of predators when they're full grown. Uh, it's mostly their eggs or when they're really small, they can, get, uh, they can get eaten up by things like birds or raccoons or maybe even skunks. Um, but once they're full grown, these guys are really going to be pretty safe, right? It's only things like cars um, and losing their burrows that are really important things for them. 
Nora and Peyton want to know, can she swim? Oh, great question. Um, so she cannot swim. Um, if we put Sandy here in a pond, she may just sink to the bottom. So she is not very good um, at swimming. However, she loves the water. So what she's gonna do instead is instead of swimming around, like maybe we saw Woody swimming around last week, or maybe you'd see a duck swimming around, right? She's not very good at that kind of swimming. Instead, she likes to soak. So she's gonna crawl into a puddle or a, a small, um, like a small pool and she's gonna hang out there. And even though she can't dive down and swim around, she's going to be just soaking around, um, just soaking in, in that water. And she loves that. She actually, sometimes we give her a little bit of a bath with a toothbrush and we clean off her shell and she seems to enjoy that. So Kelly from Limerick wants to know, does she share a home with any other tortoises? Oh, good question. So she does not share her home with any other tortoises. She lives by herself. Um, and in the wild, they wouldn't share their burrows with other tortoises either. Instead, they would actually just share their burrows with other kinds of animals, right? Other species of animals. So things like rodents or insects or things like that as well. That's a great question. Uh, Carla wants to know what time of year would Sandy lay eggs if she lived in the wild? Good question. So she would be laying eggs anywhere between May and July. Um, so that's mostly when they're going to be laying those eggs. Um, and they can lay about six eggs at a time. And Rocco and Nora from Conchahawken wanted to know how old she is. She is turning 16 years old on September 14th. Um, so she's, you know, thinking about maybe getting her permit, maybe going to get a car soon. I don't know. You guys will have to let me know if you think uh, she should get her own car, maybe what kind of car she should get. We'll, we'll, th we'll have to talk about it. Uh, Mikey wants to know, why do her scales look like dry skin? Oh, great question, Mikey. Um, so that's because they are kind of like dry skin, right? But they're more kind of like fingernails, right? So her scales are made up out of keratin, um, which is the same stuff that makes up our fingernails. So she looks like she has a little bit of dry skin, but we actually soak her very frequently and that helps to hydrate her skin. Um, and so even though it looks a little dry, those scales are actually just gonna protect her from dirt and debris and all kinds of stuff like that too. So it's really important, those scales that she has all on her arms um, and then the scales that are on her shell are called scoots. All right, so it looks like Savvy wants to know, does Sandy have any teeth? She does not, so she only has a beak and that beak is gonna help her munch on all kinds of yummy stuff. Jennifer wants to know, does she like strawberries? She sure does like strawberries, Jennifer. Um, these guys are able to see the colors red and oranges a little better than other colors. So if she were looking at a blueberry or a, uh, or a strawberry, she'd probably choose the strawberry for sure. Oh, Darlene wants to know, can you have a gopher tortoise as a pet? So you cannot, um, it is illegal unless, uh, I think you have to have a permit if one digs in your yard um, and that way you're not really keeping it as a pet, but you're letting that tortoise live there in your backyard. And that's something that the US Fish and Wildlife Service down in Florida has put into place. Um, they have a lot of rules and permits about keeping tortoises in your backyard that are native, right? So it's an animal, just like you might have a rabbit living in your backyard or under a shed or maybe some squirrels in your neighborhood, right? Those are all animals that we just allow, you know, that are that are allowing us to live or cohabitate with them right in their environment um so it's kind of a similar thing for the, for our gopher tortoise friends um so it looks like helen wants to know why do turtles and tortoises look the same oh great question so uh pretty much all tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. Um, kind of like a square rectangle, rectangle square deal. Um, but they do all, they're super closely related. So um, all turtles and tortoises, right, they all have this characteristic shell on their back. Some turtles have softer shells. Um, some turtles are longer or flatter or bigger or smaller. Um, but they all do have similar characteristics because they're, they're very closely related um, in the animal kingdom. So that's why they look a lot alike. Nora wants to know, does Sandy have a favorite caretaker? Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know. I think she probably, um, she might have a favorite, but I don't know. I know I like to spend a lot of time with her, so we hang out sometimes. All right, guys, great questions today. Oh man, so we'll see. It looks like Sandy might be interested in her salad again. We'll see if she hops over and munches some more. 
All right, Jessica loves turtles. Oh, Jessica, right up my alley. I too love turtles. Heather wants to know, will she get any bigger? Oh, awesome question, Heather. So probably not. Sandy here, she is about full grown, right? She weighs about 11 to 12 pounds. She's about a foot, a little over a foot and a half long. Um, and that's as big as she's gonna get. There are some tortoises on planet Earth that get enormous. There are some tortoises out there that get like 500 pounds. They can be like five feet long. They just get enormous. Um, but for the most part, uh, they Sandy here, she's not going to get any bigger. But some of those other tortoises that are in other places on the wor in the world uh, are going to get pretty big. All right, Hunter wants to know, does she have any babies of her own? Good question, Hunter. She does not. Sandy here has actually never laid any eggs before, um, so she does not have any babies. Ella wants to know, is Sandy's shell firm all over, or are there any soft spots? Ella, that's a really great question. So her shell, her shell as a whole is pretty tough, but she has soft spots kind of in her elbow area. So her shell is pretty connected. So if you take a look at the side here, you can see this is where her, her the top of her shell, which we call a carapace, and the bottom of her shell, which we call a plastron, you can see that they're connected by bone on the side. Now, where she does have those soft spots is right in kind of her arm areas, right by her neck there. That's nice and soft. And uh, same thing with her back legs, too. That's going to be kind of a soft spot. But in terms of her shell on its own, she's not going to be having any soft spots in here. This is all rock solid. All right. So Vivian wants to know, will she hibernate? So she won't technically hibernate like, like Woody would, right? Or some other turtles that are found further up north. Um, they will spend a lot more time um, down in, um, she'll spend a lot more time down in her burrow in the winter months. So they kind of, they get a little sleepier. They don't move around as much, um, but she won't fully hibernate for the whole winter time like some other animals might. All right, guys, it looks like this is our last question. It looks like Kimberly's four-year-old wants to know if she can do karate like a ninja turtle. Oh, man. Oh, she cannot. I certainly wish she did, though. Although, to be fair, I don't know what she does at nighttime, so she might go and join the Ninja Turtles. Um, we'll have to maybe put a camera on her and see what happens. But um, as for right now, I don't think I've ever seen Sandy do any karate. Um, but she does like to cruise and go for walks. That's a great question. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Again, thank you for sticking around. Um, hopefully tomorrow we will be back on at 11 a.m. to learn about a new habitat um, and meet another one of our animal friends. And thanks so much for joining us today, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks for hanging out at Zoo School Live.